Lane's fertilizing it right now. He's putting out uh, 200 pounds of urea and 50 pounds of ammonium sulfate. And uh, here he comes down into the field. It doesn't take long. So he's hauling about you know, close to 4,000 pounds. This farm is 485 acres, just almost 500 acres. It's all leveled. We usually haven't rice. We had beans last year, just because we need some rotation. This year it's back in rice. It looks pretty good. It's a little bit on the late side, but it's early, early. It's not too late. It's really funny how that stuff tillers. Fertilizer and water in 10 days. I mean, it, it, it's amazing uh, how solid green it'll look in you know, a short period of time. All right, so I'm gonna go over and turn this well on, and I hope it comes up. It should. <laughs> well, it'll be the first time this year. Whoops. All right, let's step back, it's on auto. Looks like it's gonna work. Awesome. The year of extremes. Extreme wet, extreme cold, extreme dry, extreme hot. And I mean, there was no in between uh, and, and there was not a week that separates any of the extremes. It's been really tough. Uh, you know, we're pretty sandy. Or we're really sandy, that's what, so the wet doesn't really bother me that bad. But we had rain events, we were getting like seven inches, five inches, I mean, that's just, that's hard to handle. And then uh, I was in the field yesterday and I was like, where did all this sand come from? And my ground's pretty flat, but it rained so much, it washed, just washed it down there. It, 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 I've never seen that before. And I've been around this place for a long time, so. And that was a seven inch rain followed by a five inch rain. And I'm not even counting the ones and twos in between. Two weeks ago we started cutting wheat. So we finished that and uh, it was too wet to plant. We had to wait a day before we could plant. We didn't plant it all behind the combines because it was too wet and then we had to wait an extra day after we got through with the wheat just so we could start planting wheat. Or I'm sorry, planting soybeans. So I need to stimulate a response. I think it's gonna work. And everybody's always wants to point the finger everywhere else, but it normally starts with you. Here we go. This is a pretty special place to me. Now, here we are nine days, and it is so dry and so hot, we just stopped. Just because we had to take care of what crops we had in the ground and up, and irrigation mainly. It's a full-time job keeping all this stuff irrigated. So turn these wells on, I just realized it's 1.45 at two o'clock. These things are gonna go on a uh, energy saving plan, so they'll turn them off electronically or wirelessly and they won't come back on the seven, so. Anyway, we'll turn them on anyway. And we'll walk over here and turn it on. And here she comes. That well's pumping about probably close to 3,000 gallons a minute. And it's split between two main fields. One's 80 acres, one's 75. And this one over here to the west. But I gotta get this, these fields balanced. So if I got 3,000 gallons of water, I happen to know this one field uses more water than this field. So it's just kind of, uh, oh, you just gotta give it a few days to see where the water levels are gonna fall and adjust as needed. We want the bottom canopy to be healthy with a good fungicide. We use Revitec on it. 
because it's really going to help that bean finish off strong. But on our farm, we got average of six bushel better with the Revitec fungicide than any other fungicide. Probably absent of disease just because we got the Revitec out here, but just mainly for the plant health. For one thing that is a must, that's this product right here. Reducing stress adds bushels. We are here at Chestnut Vale, which is Temple Road's father's home farm. We've become very good friends. Getting ready to fill up the planter, start planting soybeans. He's got a trailer full of bean products and starter fertilizer to apply for the upcoming season. We run Radiate in furrow. We're running Quick Ultra Awaken in furrow. Gets the plant up fast. Helps with root development. We've been running dry fertilizer today. A nitrogen phosphorus uh, in a two by two as well. Uh, not only on corn, but also on beans. Corey's in the combine with Temple now, and we're all just having a good time visiting together. Wait, you gotta make my car! <laughs> June 29th, uh, we're here at the plant loading up Temple Roads with some Dynagro soybeans for behind his wheat. I brought out five because they're only 35 min unit mini bulks, but four is fine. Two and two. So uh, we've loaded him up with four mini balks, try to get him planting today, and he'll probably be back in later this afternoon to get a few more. We've had some rain, but now, today and tomorrow, they'll be rolling pretty good. Yeah, so this, this, this conveyor stays pretty busy now. Now that we got sunshine and heat, guys are coming in to get, wheat, get their wheat beans. Where are y'all planting these at? Easton. Hey, did you cut your wheat yet? And you good? Have you planted your beans? How much wheat have you got left to cut? We sell about 25,000 units of soybeans, around 8,000 units of corn, so pretty big location in this area. So there are four six, which is what you're gonna want behind wheat. And I've got some others for you too, so if you need more, I got I got plenty of these, and then we'll switch to something else and get into it. I'm just ready for the season to get over with. I'm ready for these boys to finish wheat. Ready for them to uh, get their wheat beans in, get some spraying done, and then I'm ready to get on the boat and enjoy some little bit of vacation here soon. Jimmy Ward calls me the fixer, but I, I'm done fixing. I'm, I'm here, I'm not leaving Centerville. We want the bottom canopy to be healthy with a good fungicide. We use Revitec on it. It's really gonna help that bean finish off strong. But on our farm, we got average of six bushel better with the Revitec fungicide than any other fungicide. Probably absent of disease just because we got the Revitec out here, but just mainly for the plant health. The one thing that is a must, that's this product right here. Reducing stress adds bushels. Copperhead concaves to me are the only way to go. This is a real return on our investment. When we went to these, we took an automatic increase all the way to 5,300 bushels an hour, which is incredible. Sometimes we don't have enough truck to keep up with what this combine can harvest. Use less horsepower, less fuel, and did a better job cleaning. It's second to none. We're out here. These are the beans that we just supplied the uh, eight ounces of Revitec by BSF, all of them in the last couple hours. Uh, they're irrigated, they're planted April the 10th. And uh, they're looking pretty good. They're knee high. They'll be growing fast now. We've got the irrigation system running. Uh, got the fungicide on them. Some foliar fertilizer. Maybe fill in some blanks. And uh, I don't know, as far as stage, got a lot of flowers on it. I mean, what do you think those are, Cade? Are we at uh, Just about uh, to our three, you know. Well, you call it R2. I'm, I'm always late to the a game. R2. Right yeah. now, we'll be sitting at R2. I would pushing I, pretty close. Yeah, I call them R2. I'm just not one of those guys that walks out in a bean field that's two weeks old and somebody happens to see a, a strange bloom and they say, oh, the whole field's R1. Right, right. I do not uh, subscribe to that. They're looking good. Uh, I don't know, we may dig, dig one up just to see what the root looks like. Uh oh, it's kind of hard. That's not very good. This was in corn last year. 
Not an easier one. It's not too soft either, but maybe we can get it in there. This is a new shovel too, it's pretty dull. I just broke it. Yeah, okay. Well anyway, we'll I knocked it off, but a lot of uh nodules there. Yeah, and I mean, I hold that for me, Kay. There's plants working for us, making its own nitrogen. Got one four bean pod started. Oh, yeah, look at there. So, yeah, definitely started. First pod good. we find in the field is a four bean pod, so that's a good sign. That's good. There's, uh oh, what's this one? No, that's a three beaner. That's the only four bean pod in the field. <laughs> we'll come back in a few weeks. We'll have these things good and irrigated and hopefully the ground's a little softer. Let me just hit a bad spot. And uh, look at all the positions. I mean, man, we're really, really setting up there to... So when you stage beans, obviously, I mean, that's further than R. That one pod would be a R three plus R four, but you you count down three, three, don't you? Four, three, four. Three or yeah, four. Top, top, top. So, four. you know, one, two, three, four, maybe. Well, someone would say one, two, three. I don't know, I, I still tend to. So, all right, so we're still, you know, R two, just cause we got, yeah, the flowers are done, but you know, the pods haven't quite, yeah. you know, we're still down probably to here before we really, we need get, to see this, get this little, one. yeah. So a quarter inch pod, to there. a quarter inch pod is R3, correct? Yeah, three, three sixteenths, I guess. But three sixteenths, can I borrow your tape measure? Hey, and this, is, this is my, uh, <laughs> yeah, about 15, uh, 12 millimeter. No, this is, this is, this is just a Midwesterner in me right now coming out. Cause, three you know, sixteenths wow. versus a quarter when we're staging the soybeans. That's something for the records there. For the books. <laughs> what we really want out of our soybeans, we want them to come up and then we want to be able to combine them. All that stuff in between doesn't matter. So, now this field has, has a lot of potential coming on. So. I would say uh, in a month these beans will be chest high on me and hopefully loaded down, which there's a lot of nodes on that one. Got 15 nodes on there. They've, they've been stressed, so 20 inches of rain, 100 degree heat right now. I'd call that stress. With the soybeans of Terramax, we brought it out and instantly, man, I just couldn't believe the nodulation we had so early. Look at that. That root, look how much nodulation is already on there. And you have these little peanuts. All the way down here, that deep in the soil, around the roots here, that's a very good start. If you haven't heard of them, you better get to know them because their products are here to play. We are here at Chestnut Vale, which is Temple Road's father's home farm. We've become very good friends, getting ready to fill up the planter, start planting soybeans. He's got a trailer full of bean products and starter fertilizer to apply for the upcoming season. We run Radiate in furrow. We're running Quick Ultra Awaken in furrow. Gets the plant up fast, helps with root development. We've been running dry fertilizer today, a nitrogen phosphorus uh, in a two by two as well, uh, not only on corn, but also on beans. We want the bottom canopy to be healthy with a good fungicide. We use Revitec on it. It's really going to help that bean finish off strong. But on our farm, we got an average of six bushel better with the Revitec fungicide than any other fungicide. Probably absent of disease just because we've got the Revitec out here, but just mainly for the plant health. The one thing that is a must, that's this product right here. Reducing stress adds bushels. Okay, thank you. Did he say I already got you? <laughs> yep. <laughs> if I lose this year, it's y'all's fault. It ain't as thick as you think it is. These are Corey's beans. These are the, this is, I guess we're off the terminal, ain't we? Yeah. 
So they were playing it the two ways. The, the crosshatch? Yeah, this is the crosshatch. The plant this was the latest beans that we planted. But they haven't been treated with anything. We've done nothing to these. They haven't even been, I haven't even sprayed nothing on them. Like not even um, herbicide. We've done nothing. Probably should have stunted them back, but dad said he didn't want to spray them yet. He wanted to wait. So I left them alone. I haven't done much to my house either. I mean, I haven't, I never got a chance to burn them back or nothing because everything got away from me. But I mean, they're, they got great branching on them for, you know what I mean, for not doing anything to them. But I, only thing's done, been done to them is just um, fertility up front with anhydrous. That's all we got. But we got, you know, the spacing is good enough that, you know, we ended up with the branching that we wanted. So I'm, I'm assuming we got some original, you know, I don't know if it's like what Corey said. Corey, explain what you were telling me the other day about the anhydrous and all that stuff. Your soils, that's what I was just showing my son, because Temple thinks or claims that he has some sort of clay. I mean, this is like beach sand to me. Yeah, this isn't beach sand. I could take you serious some beach sand today. I'm just saying to me, yeah. from where I'm from though, I call this beach sand. Like, that's exactly what it feels like. Texture-wise, you agree, son? It's like when we go to the beach, right? With the anhydrous ammonia, the ammonium form is going to try to le leach up, and that is going to automatically stunt the beans. Because what we're trying to do with the anhydrous ammonia is overload the, overload the plant later on in life. So about R4, R5 is when we're trying to overload the bean with nitrogen. So it'll actually stun it then. But if it's getting the whiff of ammonium early, then that is actually going to act like a natural stunt to that bean also. Yeah. The stalk size quality of the, of the stalk is tremendous already. We have trouble with these outside branches. When they get pods on them, they just end up snapping and they come right out. So we're trying to come up with a way to strengthen those to try to keep them on because what we'll end up having, you know, 20 or 30 down each one of these stems. And when you have that and you lose them, I mean, that's potentially 10, 15 bushel that we can leave out in the field. And we can't seem to overcome that. We got the branching part figured out. We've got the burning them back part figured out. Well, not figured out, but we're getting closer. And we're able to stone them and set more nodes. But what we found with these, and I talked to Corey last week, you know, we got plants that we literally put anhydrous on. We didn't put anything else on. Um, I haven't treated them. We did a bunch of in stuff, like crazy in stuff on these beans. So we, we have stuff there. See how you have all these nodes down here kind of stacked at the bottom? Yeah. So that would tell me that's a sign that you were cold and wet early. Yeah. Because everything was trying to stack. You know, when we stump beans, we don't want internode spacing that far, yeah. correct? Look how stretched out that is. Yeah, it's getting stretched out So then you know it's, it's stunted with the branching part. If you look at your internodes, though, you're not there. Yeah. Your spacing. So to capture both the best worlds to run 125 plus bushel soybeans, you got to have the branching and the stacked internodes all the way through that bean. Yeah. So right now he only has one part of that and that's the branching. Because right now they're vegetative right now. So we're trying to get that backed out of them and try to put them back the other way. Now, when I wanted to treat these a week or so ago, we got three inches of rain. So I couldn't get on the dirt. So then we left it. And then we were like, okay, we went to start cutting wheat. And then I was setting my sprayer up that we were gonna come back and we were gonna spray them. We got another two inches of rain. So, I mean, I, it's barely dry enough now where I could maybe potentially put something on them. But at this point, I mean, I'm kind of like with Caroline, maybe you just let it go and, and don't sun them because at this, if they start to shoot blossoms and you wanna go try to burn them back, all you do is abort all the blossoms that are on there. You got three and, days to do it. Yeah. I don't have, the time's not here for me. And my important thing is right now, to be honest with you, is not stunting these beans. My important thing is, is to get the crop out of the field that we gotta get out. You know, never, never worry about your next crop when you got a crop that's trying to come out of the field right now. And that's what we have right now. Every day that goes by, we're losing test weight on wheat. And every rain that comes in, we're losing more test weight. And I can't, we do all flour mill quality wheat, so I can't afford that. So you're taking a chance of not selling flour mill quality, selling feed mill quality, and I'm, there's no money to be made there. Holy. It's bad.
This is the whole inside component. I don't know if you can even get up in here and look at this piece. But look how bad this is. This belongs up front. Up front. And it's completely come apart. Wow, dude. Wow. How does that happen? Just. I'm hey. Here's what happens. So, look. These things here crack apart. Uh -huh. And then it just it comes completely apart. Now, you what know what this piece is? This is that piece that goes up all the way in the front of the shaker pan internal. Oh, it is? So I don't know what we got going on. I got to get this out first and then look up front. Oh, I mean, there's a chance I can take this out huh? and keep going, Same but thing. it's not. The oh, chances aren't great because it's broke. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's yeah. literally broke apart. So if it broke this apart, I would imagine my sieves up there are wrecked. <laughs> I mean, like really wrecked. I need to take these off. Let me take these off and see if I can drop it out. I'm ripping it apart and putting it back together. I'm gonna. Do you think that thing wasn't creating some noise in there? Mm. This whole thing is in here sideways. You think it came apart? Yeah. It's supposed to look like this. See, they just wear and they crack and fall apart. Dad, what? We're good. What? We're good. You know what happened? What? Them two side bolts came out. We can still run like we are. What? Yep. What side bolt? I think I can. <laughs> nope. Can't do it. I gotta put I gotta put that piece back in. Looks like the bolts fell out of it and it just came apart and shook apart. What? What? There's a really good chance. chance. I'm gonna take that back take to, that my, back shop. to my shop. Weld it all back together. Back together. Be running back up. Only two bolts hold this thing. It's right here and on the other side. So it basically broke apart, came loose, and here's what we have. And I'm gonna weld all these back in there. We got 350 acres left, and I'm gonna get done. That's what this is. So that's what we're after. Who do you think that's on the phone over there calling? Probably another breakdown? I think we're good. We're gonna stick this back in. Alright. Nah, I can stick Maybe I need help. I grabbed a hot weld, hold on. I grabbed it somewhere. That thing was... All right. To the field. What even is it for? That bolts in another bracket, another free cleaner that I hated. And I think it might be a 14. Oh, shit. What is it? 14? 14? What'd you give me? 15? He said it was a 15. Is that a 15? I can't see it. I'm on pop up glasses.